myself uh, dr devat vyas devulpalli an oral radiologist and oral implantologist apart from all these i am similar to you all i am a digital dentistry enthusiast so with the changes happening in the field of dentistry which are happening at a very rapid pace this is the time to jump in to the digital dentistry and start transforming our regular dental practice into digital dental practice so today we are going to talk one of the most important aspects of digital dentistry the cbct and guided implantology so i consider cbct as a super camera <clears throat> it converts a regular dentist into a superhero this dentist using this super camera he can see through the patient see through the issues of the patient he can say whether the tooth is on the buccal side or lingual side he can place an implant without opening the flap he can go through the curved canals he can place he can identify a calcified canal identify a missed canal all this can happen with the help of cbct so with the help of cbct and guided implantology with the precision it provides you can place implants in such a way that you can hit the bull's eye every time you need not be an expert implantologist even if you are a novice implantologist using the proper planning in cbct and using guided implantology you can place implant perfectly as planned so by the end of this presentation we will be answering some important questions like how this cbct and guided implantology will help you become a superhero and what is the need to become the superhero what are the responsibilities of being a superhero what we are doing to be and to become a superhero and what are the future prospects going to be as a dental superhero i'll be talking a brief about history and overview of cbct and major part of the talk will be in the cbct applications in guided implantology we'll be talking about workflow in guided implantology we'll be discussing few clinical cases later we'll be talking about the advantages limitations and also the future trends in cbct and guided implantology we cannot start any talk about cbct without him he is none other than roenchen so why do we need to talk about him because he is the one who discovered x-rays and have not taken any patent for it and he left it for mankind's scientific research and grow so one day he was actually working on cathode rays and suddenly to his surprise he found a fluorescence at a distance 8 feet away from his work area on a barium platycyanate coated paper he placed a paper in between and there was no shadow formed later he placed the key in between the shadow was formed on the platycyanate paper later he placed his hand and to his surprise he found bones on that shadow of bones so that is when he discovered that this particular radiation can pass through the flesh but it cannot pass through the bones that is how the discovery of dental x-rays happened and he then captured his wife's hand x-ray and then he demonstrated a similar x-ray of uh, the the then famous anton von kolliker anatomist which is also looks very similar but improvised in contrast compared to that of his wife's x-ray so from that stage we developed to a very advanced stage these x-rays were invented in 1896 and in the same year itself the dentists they started doing experiments on these x-rays and they tried to capture few teeth here you see this is the first x-ray taken and this was an another x-ray of which is little better than the first x-ray and uh, now we moved from there to periapical radiographs and then from this periapical radiographs we moved to the digital sensors and 
from single tooth x-rays to we moved into full mouth OPGs and from there we moved into three-dimensional imaging. In this three-dimensional imaging, we were able to capture images in all three different dimensions. Not only in dentistry, everywhere, in medicine, in animation, everywhere we are moving from two dimensions through to three dimensions. So in cone beam computer tomography, what you see is this is a CBCT machine capturing two dimensional images of the patient from all different dimensions. And all those two dimensional topographic images, they get overlapped to form a three dimensional image. And then this three dimensional image is then reconstructed into axial, sagittal and coronal sections. So with the advanced age, we, we were, if you see here, this is the evolution of cell phone. We initially started using large phones. Later we moved to small phones, flip phones, foldable phones. Later we moved on to the touch screens. Again, we are moving back to big screen phones and then again moving back to foldable and flip phones. Similarly, here we are moving from this film kind of radiography to digital radiography. So this is the cone beam computer tomography, three-dimensional image captured here. These are the multiplanar reconstruction images in axial, coronal, and sagittal sections. And when you form an arch through this axial section, we get images called as transaxial sections through this curve drawn through the arch. So the major difference between CT scan and CBCT is here, we have a pan-shaped beam and multiple detectors and there is an X-ray source. This X-ray source and detectors, they move around the patient. They capture a single section of that patient. Then these multiple sections, they all will be overlapped to form a three-dimensional image. And in that picture, it is made up of multiple pixels, two-dimensional pixels and three-dimensional voxels. Whereas in case of cone beam computer tomography, instead of a fan shaped beam, we will be having a cone shaped beam. And instead of multiple detectors, we have a single flat panel detector. And with a single turn, this cone beam computer tomography equipment can capture complete three dimensional data. So because of that, the amount of time taken to capture a cone beam computer tomography compared to CT scan is very less. And even the radiation is also comparatively very less. So when you are seeing a CBCT, what are you supposed to see in a report? And next we'll be seeing what you are supposed to see in a DICOM data. So most of the times we write to the patients as CBCT fourth quadrant, CBCT third quadrant, or CBCT full mom. But it is always advisable to write what is the reason you are writing this CBCT for. So this will help the radiologist who is working in that CBCT center to go through that particular area of concern and answer your queries, which will be very helpful for him to report. So here, if you see, this is the axial section. And if you see this particular axial section is divided into multiple transaxial sections. And the numbering, what you see on this, you see a similar numbering on this panoramic image, panoramic section. So. When you see a transaxial section number 17, which is showing a buccolingual width of the bone and also the length from the crest of the bone to the nerve, it corresponds to this particular area of that panoramic radiograph. So this, using, using even the report, you can come to some basic conclusions like what would be the implant size can be used and how many implants can be planned? All those things can, we, we can come to a basic idea using this CBCT report. So you are supposed to go through this numbering and similar section on the transaxial sections to see the bone width and height. Most of the times we give now marking and we'll also give maxillary sinus marking. So that major amount of data is transferred in reports. 
and when you are going through a dicom data this is the dicom study done using blue sky plan these are the axial sections what you see here is the axial section so this is the curve drawn through the axial section these are the transaxial sections so in this we see the buccolingual aspect of the bone we see the amount of bone remaining on the buccal aspect and lingual aspect of the implants you can place the implants and check its relation with the adjacent teeth cortical bones adjacent implants and these are the 360 degrees view around the implant you can click on a single implant rotate all around the implant and see how much amount of bone is there if you think some more amount of bone is there you can increase the length if you think if you are perforating the cortex you can reduce the length of the implant if you are not happy with the angulation you can change the angulation so in dicom data it will help you to exactly measure the distance and angle measurement so here we will see similar measurement at in a, one of the transaxial sections so you can go, you have to go to the tools go to the distance measurement tool option measure from the buccal aspect to the lingual aspect as there is 7.5 mm of bone you can happily plan 5 mm implant leaving 1 mm bone on the buccal aspect and 1 mm bone on the lingual aspect as there is 17 mm length of the bo available bone you can plan an implant of 15 mm if you don't want to engage cortices if you want to do bicortical engagement then you have to go for full length placement or subcortical placement similarly you can do angle measurement also you have to go to a section where you see both the implants then you measure the angle go to the tool section select the angle measurement tool measure the angle if you see here this angle is somewhere around 17 degrees so this will help you in deciding with which multi unit angle abutment you are supposed to go as this is a case of hollon 6 and the posterior if most implants we generally place them at an angulation to get better ap spread so in such cases you can measure even the multi unit angle measurement using this angle measurement tool next we also have a tool for the density measurement so here again you have to go to the tool section go to the density value measurement option you can measure the density all around the implant here if you see the density around the bone is somewhere around 200 to 1000 anything above 300 is good to go for implant and if the density measurement is very less what you are supposed to do is do drilling you are supposed to do short drilling and place a bigger implant so that you get enough tar tor so when you compare to ct and cbct there is a very less amount of radiation in cone beam computer tomography which is almost equal to the natural radiation what we get exposed in around 3 to 4 days so cbct has got multiple application in implants orthodontics periodontics and uh, various other specialties but today's area of concern will be more about the guided implantology so the basic things what you are supposed to take care while placing the implants is while doing implant planning it has to be prosthetically driven you have to place the tooth first and then place the implant you have to avoid the cantilever forces as much as possible and make sure you have proper ap spread for all on four and all on six cases you have to plan implant and abutment angulation in such a way that the access holes 
they come palatally. This would, if they come buckly, it will cause some aesthetic issues and you may not be able to give screw retained crowns. So you have to make sure they come palatally and you have to mark sinus in the posterior maxilla. And if you are planning implants in the posterior mandible, you have to make sure and take care about the inferior alert nerve, submandibular fossa. And if you're planning in the anterior mandible, you have to mark the nerve loop and anterior extension of, of the mental foramen. Now through the mental foramen. So these are the things you are supposed to take care in that particular areas. And you have to make sure there is enough bone all around the implant. And you have to make sure all the implants are 2 mm away from the vital anatomical landmarks. And there is around 1.5 mm distance between the implants and the natural tooth. And make sure there is at least 3 mm distance between the implants. So these are the basic things you have to take care while planning implants. And now we are moving on to guided implantology workflow. Generally, in order to produce a guide, we, we are supposed to have some DICOM data and STL data. STL data is something which is seen along with the soft tissues and DICOM data is the bony data. So we are supposed to have both the things for tissue supported dentures. So this is how you merge the STL data and DICOM data. If you see here, this is the modal data. It is merged with the DICOM data of the patient. Uh, anything in green color suggests that the overlap is more or less perfect. So once such overlap is done, later we fabricate a guide on this model. So the drilling through this model will result in implant placement at the exact area where we have planned in the bone. So for dentulous cases, we'll be requiring CBCT of the patient. And along with that, we'll require either an intraoral scan or an impression or the model of the patient. So we'll use this scan data of the model or impression as an STL data or the intraoral scan as an STL data and we'll merge it with the CBCT of the patient. So for in dentulous cases, these are the two major things. One, either an impression or a model or a scan from the intraoral data along with the soft tissues. And CBCT is the bony data, what we get from the CBCT center. So we need all both these information to form a dental, dentulous guide or a tooth supported guide. So if the patient has got too much of metal artifacts in his mouth, if he has got too many crowns in his mouth, then uh, the CBCT will have so many artifacts. In such cases, what happens is the overlap becomes very difficult. So in such cases, it is advisable that you take a, a polyvinyl siloxane impression, uh, place that tray in the patient's mouth, and over that tray, you put some radio-opaque markers. So these radio-opaque markers will help in precise overlap of the STL data and DICOM data. So the same method you can also follow in edentulous patients without a denture. If the patient has got no denture, what you're supposed to do is you place a polyvinyl siloxane impression, put radiopaque markers on the tray, then place it in the patient's mouth and ask him to go for the scan. Then later another scan is done for the only impression with the radiopaque markers. So this impression with radiopaque markers will give the soft tissue data and the CBCT with impression in the mouth will give hard tissue data along with radio opaque markers. So when we overlap the radio opaque markers, we'll get an exact replica of the soft, soft tissue overlap over the hard tissues. So in patients with denture, what we can do is we can put radio opaque markers on this denture at four to five places. This is the denture with radio opaque markers. So either you can uh, they are, these fiduciary markers, they are available as stickers or either you can uh, stick them or bond them or you can make a small hole on this denture and put uh, zinc oxide eugenol or uh, GP into these holes so that they act as radio opaque markers. So later you place this in the patient's mouth and then you ask the patient to keep it in occlusion and then the, get the scan done. So 
Later, you will scan the denture separately. So this denture intaglio surface will give the soft tissue data and denture in the patient mouth with radiopaque markers will give hard tissue data with radiopaque markers. When we fuse these two, what we'll get is the soft tissue data along with the hard tissue data. This is a lit little tough to understand in a single presentation. Later, uh, in another presentation, we will have a detailed discussion on how these fiduciary markers are placed, how uh, an overlap is done. All these things we can uh, do in our next upcoming webinar. So now we are going to present a few clinical cases, uh, which will help you understand how guides, they help in uh, different cases. So this is the first case where we are supposed to place three implants uh, in a very small area. So when we are planning to go with a free hand, there is a high possibility that we cannot maintain the enough distance between the natural tooth and the implants. So here the planning was done uh, to make sure there is enough distance between the implants and also between the implant and natural teeth. And we also made sure uh, parallelism is maintained enough to give a proper prosthetics. So if you see here, there is a model and the it is overlapped over the DICOM data of the patient. So what you see here is a surgical guide and the drilling was done to the, through the surgical guide. This is the final drill X-ray. So you, here you can appreciate the parallelism. And if you can see here, this is very less traumatic. Just with a tissue punch, implants are three implants are placed into the patient's mouth. And you can see that even this re doesn't require any sutures later. So, so with the help of the guide, we placed implants in a patient where atraumatically and patient is also very happy with the outcome. So here, if you see, this is a patient where there is no enough bone between the central and lateral incisor. We are supposed to replace a central incisor there. So here we used a tooth supported guide. We have done drilling through the, what you see here is called as a key. In fully guided, uh, you may not need a key, but where you are supposed to go with a narrow implant, it's better to go with a key because the precision will be better with this key as there will be minimal mesodistal or buccolingual movement. So that this is a drill through the key. And if you see here, we were able to place implant exactly as planned. We have achieved enough torque. We have given abutment to that patient and immediate temporization was done with an PMMA crown. After three to four months, we have planned to give a metal ceramic crown over that particular implant. So here, this is a case of a partial extraction therapy or a socket shield technique, where we have used two different guides. This is the first guide. Where drilling is done to go to the apex of the tooth. So lancet drill is used to go till the apex. And similar guides we can also use for as endo guides where there is a calcified canal and we are unable to reach the apex. In such cases, what we can do is uh, we give an endo guide where you can directly drill the calcified portion and reach the patent portion of the canal. So later, uh, the tooth cutting jetria bars are used to do buccal and lingual separation. The palatal part is extracted along with the apex. Then we use another guide to drill through the palatal aspect of the remaining tooth. 
This is the final drill beyond the apex. Here you can also see a part of the tooth remaining on the buccal aspect. Later, the implant is placed, retaining the buccal aspect of the, this is the buccal aspect of the tooth. And tooth is placed on the palatal aspect. Implant is placed on the palatal aspect. So this partial extraction therapy, it helps in getting a good emergence profile in the aesthetic zones. And it will also help in maintaining the, avoiding crystal bone loss. So here, this is an example of another full large case. So what you see here is a fully guided kit. Tissue punch is done. So here we are not elevating the complete flap. We are just removing the flap over the implant planning area. So because of this platform, which is available, you will not be going in any direction. The drill will move only in the planned direction. So gradually in incremental length, you drill through this place. Later we have placed multi-unit abutments and temporary cylinders. And later denture conversion was done over these temporary cylinders. So the denture has become into a temporary screw retained processes. The patient local anesthesia has not waned off it. Patient left the clinic with a fixed teeth. So this is the case. So this is another case of full arch case where alone six was planned. This is the plan and it is executed as planned. This is the initial condition of the patient. All the teeth were extracted. So this is the guide in patient's mouth. It was stabilized with anchor pins. Later drilling was done through those holes. And finally, we were able to give a processes to the patient after three months. So with the latest feature in the latest update of Blue Sky Bio, what you can do is uh, something great is automatic bone and teeth segmentation. So here the artificial intelligence usage is at its peaks. The software will determine complete segmentation. All the DICOM data, if you see here, there is so much of noise in this DICOM data. But just with a click, all that DICOM data has got converted into an STL data. So this STL data, you can use it for mock surgeries or you can use it for guide fabrications, bone supported guide fabrication. In this particular case, it was a knife edge ridge. We planned a guided bone regeneration in this case. So. This is the maxilla with knife edge ridge, which is not acceptable for implant placement. So the doctor requested for a guide where they can increase the width of the arch with using a guide. So virtually we have augmented the ridge, later designed a guide over it. We printed it in medical grade titanium later. So this guide printed in titanium will help in holding the autogenous bone graft, which will be placed over the bone. So this is how the incision is given and flap is elevated in relation to the maxilla. Bone graft is collected and autograft is mixed with the xenograft. This is a titanium mesh printed. So we have placed that titanium mesh inside the patient's mouth along with the bone graft and stitches were placed and expecting uh, bone regeneration happens as planned and this case becomes compatible for implant placement in its later stages. So now coming to the future aspects of a CBCT and guided implantology, uh, this is a new system called X-Guide or x -Nav Technologies. It works similar to a GPS nav navigation mapping system. 
so planning is all done inside in the system and later the plan is submitted to the xnav guide system so it has got coordinates in all three different directions so using this it will help you in placing the handpiece in specific direction it will allow you to drill only in a particular direction so here you even not don't require any surgical guide system will assist you in drilling in that particular direction so precisely you go into the bone as planned and implant placement will be done as per the plan so next is the robotic assisted dental surgery yomi is a dental robot so here also we plan everything the implant placement and everything will be planned in the system later that plan will be submitted to the robot so this robot is manually assisted so it has got a patient tracking system so it will not it will move as per the coordinates as per the patient movement so it will make sure you are play, placing the implant exactly in the same direction So if you see here, dentist is guided only in a specific direction to go to that particular area. And once it goes to the particular area, based on the edges and teeth, it will change its direction to the implant plan direction. And later, with minimal effort, drilling happens in the direction as planned. So these are the future aspects already started started abroad. Maybe in few years we'll be having similar robots in our dental clinics. Earlier CBCT used to be a third party collaboration. Now few dentists they are having CBCT in house. So we may expect this dental robots soon in our dental practices. So. With great power comes great responsibility. So we are not supposed to use this radiation. We are not supposed to misuse it. We are not supposed to overuse it. In the initial days, if you see these pictures, uh, this was a fun fair where people used to see their heads, hands, and legs on fluoroscopes. They don't know the harmful effects of the X-rays. They were happy seeing their bones, but it caused very ill effects in the later stages. And even if you see this, uh, this is the certificate provided uh, for proper shoe fit. So they used to take x-rays and see if the shoe is uh, fitting in proper way or not. It's, this is the x-ray right way of sh shoe fit. And this is the x-ray showing wrong way of shoe fit. So in the earlier days, misuse happened in such a way. And now we are supposed to act responsibly. We are not supposed to overuse it. And when there is a specific need in a specific area, it is better to use CVCT only in that specific area instead of writing it as a full mouth CVCT. And if you want it is an in endo, endo resolution, you ask for endo resolution of that particular tooth or particular quadrant. If you want a full arch only for an overview, you can ask for a low dose CVCT. This is how you can avoid high dose radiation. In the initial days, this to check the fluoroscope if it is working or not. Daily, they used to check their hands and they developed carcinomas on their fingers. So it's better uh, to avoid excess radiation 